quadriceps tendon repair using knotless suture anchors and suture tape by Michael Amini. Traditional repair of quadriceps tendon tears requires the use of transosseous tunnels and a large exposure. Suture anchor repair facilitates a smaller exposure, but there are conflicting studies about the biomechanical strength. Recent biomechanical data support the use of knotless suture anchors and suture tape, leading to greater ultimate loads of failure, less cyclic displacement, and greater stiffness. You can see that the patient had bilateral tears and that we have already fixed the contralateral side. We place a bump under the hip and a tourniquet on the thigh. We begin by infiltrating the skin and the tear site with marking with epinephrine. The incision is centered just above the superior pole of the patella. Dissection is carried down to the tear site and the hematoma is encountered and evacuated. The joint space is then thoroughly irrigated at this time. An Army Navy retractor is hooked on the inferior pole of the patella. The superior pole of the patella is then sharply debrided of any remaining tendon stump, and the bone is scraped using a knife or a curette. The tendon is gently grasped with an Alice clamp. Typically in acute cases it is mobile, but chronic cases may require some additional mobilization. One end of an Arthrex fiber tape that is 36 inches long is passed through the torn edge of the tendon using a free needle and evened out, leaving extra length on the working end. We then secure the tendon using a running locking Krakow suture with five throws proximally and five throws distally. It's critical to remove all of the slack throughout the entire construct with every pass of the suture. The final pass is taken out through the torn edge of the tendon near the first suture. These two limbs are then clamped and used for traction while passing a second suture tape through the other half of the quadriceps tendon. The two limbs of each fiber tape are then passed through the peak eyelet of a 4.75 millimeter biocomposite swivel lock. The sutures are clamped and the anchor is left at the side for later use. This is repeated with the second anchor. The Army Navy retractor is replaced at the inferior pole of the patella. Two electrocautery marks are made at the junctions between the medial and middle thirds and the middle and lateral thirds of the patella. The 3.5 millimeter drill bit is then advanced at each electrocautery mark. The surgeon should keep a finger on the articular surface for proprioceptive feedback to ensure that the drill is centralized within the patella and that it does not encroach on the articular surface. Debris is removed and the tap for the anchor is fully seated to the laser line within each hole. Before inserting the anchors, the hole should be gently irrigated to again remove any debris. The first anchor is then inserted into the hole and despite drilling and tapping, this still usually requires a mallet given the bone density of the patella. It's critical to adequately tension the suture tapes to reduce the tendon to the bone. Once the anchor is fully inserted, the inserter is removed, and this is repeated using the second anchor. The suture tapes are cut flush with the anchor, and the core sutures within the anchor are left behind. One limb is passed through a free needle, and several running locking throws are passed through the medial retinaculum for reinforcing the repair. This is then tied down, and the same is repeated for the lateral retinaculum. If there is any remaining retinacular tear, this is closed using several figure of eight ovicral sutures. The final repair construct is demonstrated here. Thank you.